Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Hello everyone, today's story is on Jesse Michael Gomez, who was sentenced to death this year in 2022 for killing a police officer in San Diego, California. I do have a question for you guys before the story begins. California is currently not executing any of its death row inmates. Do you think it makes sense for them to continue sentencing people to death if there are no plans to follow through with their sentence? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I just want to let you in Guten County to know that this was not an intentional act. If I could trade places and I'll finish Guten, I would, but I cannot. And I am truly sorry for that. And the second thing is that uh, I told the truth on the record that time. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you for your time. It all started at around 11 o'clock p.m. on July 28, 2016. Two San Diego PD gang unit officers, Officer Jonathan J.D. de Guzman and his partner, Officer Wade Irwin, were patrolling around the 3700 block of Acacia Grove Way. While patrolling the area, the officers noticed two men split up. One man headed north on Acacia Grove Way and the other man headed south on Acacia Grove Way. Officer Irwin got out of the vehicle, leaving the car door open, while Officer J.D. stayed in the driver's seat. Officer Irwin only got out of his vehicle because he thought the man walking north on Acacia Grove Way was someone he had arrested in the past. Officer Irwin caught up with the man walking north, and he was none other than Jesse Michael Gomez. He asked Jesse, Hey, do you live in the area? And instead of getting a response, Jesse shot him. Jesse then walked to the police vehicle where Officer J.D. was sitting inside and fatally shot him. Even though Officer J.D. lost his life, he was able to shoot Jesse in the chest. Officer Irwin hid near the rear tire and he was not able to defend himself nor his partner because he had trouble breathing due to the fact that there was blood in his throat. Before medics and backup arrived on the scene, Jesse was able to escape on foot. When backup finally arrived, they pronounced Officer J.D. dead and transported Officer Irwin to the UC San Diego Medical Center for treatment of a collapsed lung, paralysis of his right diaphragm and vocal cords, facial numbness, and nerve damage. The backup officers that were at the scene noticed a trail of blood and they followed the trail all the way to the ravine where they were able to find wounded Jesse Gomez. Jesse was taken to the hospital as well for his gunshot wound and police ended up speaking to the press saying they had one out of two suspects in custody. A spokesperson for the San Diego Police Department spoke with the Los Angeles Times and told them that the suspect was a Hispanic male. They were also quoted saying, Gomez is a legal citizen in this country to the best of my knowledge. If I hear differently, I'll let you know. When questioned about the suspect's rap sheet, the spokesperson replied by saying they do not release criminal rap sheets by law, and neither the police department nor the sheriff's department release mugshots of suspects. Although Jesse's photo was not released to the public, his sons were aware that their father was locked up. One of his sons went on Facebook and made a post that said, Thanks for everyone who support my pops really means a lot to me. Don't gotta say shit, cause I know the love you guys got for my pops and the rest of the familia. I know I've been there since day one. Wait for the news to tell me if my pops is dead or alive. They won't let us see you or let us know your condition. Hashtag I love you pops. Another one of Jesse's sons by the name of Daniel was then interviewed by the San Diego Union Tribune and he was quoted saying, my dad is a good person. I don't believe he did this. No one in my family believes he did this. He also let the Tribune know that his father Jesse was an honest construction worker who was divorced. He had three adult sons and a granddaughter. He denied that his father was ever in any trouble before the police shootings. San Diego PD Chief Shelley Zimmerman did a media briefing and told the public that Officer J.D. was a 43-year-old married father of two who was on the police force in San Diego for 16 years. She then spoke about Officer Irwin and said that he was a man who cared deeply for his family and community and went in the city every night trying to make a positive difference in the community. She also mentioned that they were unaware of why the shooting happened, but it was noted that both officers were wearing bulletproof vests, but the vest did not protect them from being hit by bullets. 
Some of the shooting was caught on at least one officer's body cam footage, and they were able to identify one out of the two suspects from the video, which was Jesse Gomez. She also mentioned that the shooting took place in a high-crime neighborhood. Shortly after the briefing, the second suspect was caught after authorities surrounded his home. He was initially arrested on charges of an outstanding warrant for possession of a controlled substance. The man was 41-year-old Marcus Antonio Cassani. One of Marcus's family members told the press that it was a case of mistaken identity. Eventually, Officer Irwin was conscious and was visited by fellow officers and investigators. They told the press that he was going to make a full recovery. They also showed Officer Irwin a photographic lineup that included Jesse Gomez and another suspect that he thought Jesse Gomez was on the night of the murder. He was able to distinguish between the two and identified Jesse as the shooter. Police were not able to confirm if Cassani was connected to the crime. According to this crime news report, it does not look like it was updated after his January 12, 2016 arrest and his release date was never released. Jesse Gomez, on the other hand, was officially charged with murder and attempted murder. There was a special circumstance which made the case a capital murder case because the victims were both police officers. After five years of waiting for his trial to start, it finally began in 2021 when Jesse was 60 years old. Jesse took to the stand and told the court his side of the story. Tell me what you did see. My eyes were not fully adjusted for when the lights turn on. So I didn't really see anything. I just heard the voice where you from. So that's why I started shooting that direction. He claimed that on the night of the murder, he was high on meth and very paranoid. He thought that the officers were gang members and he did not recognize the patrol car was indeed a patrol car. He said that when the man asked him where he was from, it was a question that was common for gang members to ask other people when they suspected they were from different gangs. He told the court, I thought gang members were going to shoot and kill me. The officer in court testified that Jesse was asked, do you live in the area? Jesse, however, denied hearing that question. He followed by saying he was in fear of his life, so he pulled his gun out towards the voice and the silhouette of the car. He claimed that if it was a cop, he knew the cops would not have fired, but once he was fired at, he began to shoot as well and then jumped over a fence. He said the whole encounter seemed like seconds and the next thing he remembered was waking up handcuffed in a hospital bed. Officer Irwin testified that he believed Jesse would have killed him if he knew he was still alive. Prosecutor Valerie Summers made her closing arguments. She said that Jesse knew he was shooting at police officers and he was a cold and calculated man. He saw the police officers, he assessed the risk. That's how you know he planned this beforehand Without hesitation, he shoots into that police car. Valerie Summers did her best to get the jury to believe that Jesse killed the officer and it was a premeditated, deliberate murder. She claimed that Jesse was a felon who was in possession of a firearm and did not want to go back to prison. With each pull of that trigger, Jesse makes a decision. Should he live or should he die? Die. Five more times. Should he live or should he die? Die. The defense then spoke to the court and let them know that Jesse did shoot the officers, but insisted that he thought the officers were gang members. After weeks of testimony, it was now time for the jury to deliberate. It took the jury less than two days to deliberate, and they found Jesse guilty of murder. After the verdict, they then went to the penalty phase. In the state of California, there is a moratorium on the death penalty, but criminals could still face the death penalty, and this case qualified for the death penalty case because Jesse killed a police officer. On Friday, March 4th, the jury recommended Jesse be sentenced to death, and the San Diego Superior Court judge, Frederick Link, agreed with the jury. He believed Jesse knew he was shooting at officers. He was quoted saying, For anyone to say Mr. Gomez didn't know what was going on is ridiculous. Jesse responded by saying, I told the truth on what happened that night. This court, uh, the jury has found death. This court has confirmed the jury's opinion, and I find no reason, no reason whatsoever, to set aside that decision. Jesse's family then made statements to the media. Even though it did not come out of Jesse's mouth, they claimed he was truly sorry for what happened. Officer Irwin and Officer J.D.'s wives spoke to the media. I don't understand how you can just take someone's life without thinking of their family, especially when you are a father too. 
Officer J.D.'s wife said that she had been trying to forgive Jesse, but she noticed in court that he showed no remorse at all, and she believes he got the punishment he deserved. Officer Irwin said, There's not a day that goes by when I don't think about J.D., and I miss him terribly. He let everyone know that he would be present on Jesse's execution day, and he would watch just as he had to watch when Jesse executed his partner. Jesse was transported from jail in San Diego to a death row unit at San Quentin Prison. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. We know that some people are on death row for 30 or 40 years. Right now, with them not executing anyone in California, doesn't it make you think that his sentence will basically be life in prison? Do you think that those expecting him to be executed should stay hopeful that it will happen, or should they just assume it will never happen? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Every so we need to try hard to find a place in my heart to forgive you. But when you took the stand and did not show any remorse, well, clearly showing that you know what you have done, I would find it hard to forgive you. I hope that they give you the punishment you deserve.